Patrick Michaels is Professor of Environmental Sciences at the University of Virginia. Cato Senior Fellow of Environmental Studies, Patrick Michaels. The author of three books on meteorology. He's the past president of the American Association of State Climatologists. He's an author and reviewer on the UN's Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. And was the chair of the Committee on Applied Climatology of the American Meteorological Society. In other words, he knows what he's talking about. If we take a look at the Category 4 and 5 hurricanes in the Atlantic Basin, and the Western Pacific, which are the two biggest hurricane basins on the planet in terms of number of storms. The f relative frequency of those Category 4 and 5 storms now is the same as it was in the middle of the 20th century, in uh, the 1950s and the 1960s, in both the Atlantic and in the Western Pacific. Now, global warming didn't cause that in the 50s and the 60s, so it's very hard to tease that out of the data in 2006. North America completely freezes, tidal waves blow over New York, and anti-Bushisms are rampant. Does it sound too far-fetched? Dr. Michaels, to you first. How credible is this movie in your eye? It has absolutely no credibility whatsoever. And, and as a scientist, I really object when lies, hiding as science, are used to influence the national debate of this country. You know, the stratosphere does not become the bottom of the atmosphere. The atmosphere doesn't turn over. Hail the size of bowling balls doesn't exist. This is not the full story of science from the UN, and yet they've been deemed the source of truth on this. Indeed. And in fact, if we look at that UN report, it says specifically that there is no basis in the scientific literature existing at this time for these claims of massive sea level rise. That's the UN saying that. Do you think climate change is a hoax? Oh, heck no. Human beings are changing the climate. I think the warming that we're seeing is at, definitely at the low end of the projection range. A projection range based on computer models. We have these things called computer models. And when we look at these computer models, one of the things we see is that they tend to predict more warming than is occurring. We put an increase in carbon dioxide in them that is 1% per year. It's been 0.49% per year for the last 10 years, 0.42 for the 10 years before that, and 0.43 for the 10 years before that. So the models have twice as much greenhouse warming radiation going in them as is known to be happening. It shouldn't shock you that they predict more warming than is occurring. To get by my argument, you have to have somebody get in front of that camera and say that the central tendency of all those computer models, that billions and billions of dollars worth of research, has been wasted. Look at the models. It looks like it's only going to be about three quarters of a degree because you have to adjust them for reality. That would be the end of the issue. The issue would go away. And in Washington, issues compete with each other for attention. You know that. He comes out more or less on the same side of the issue you do. Yeah, that's because he looked at the data. When, the, when you start looking at the actual numbers, versus the assertions that people make to try and get attention to this issue. You realize that it's real, but dramatically overblown, and then that leads to a search for motives. What, why do issues, it's not just global warming, many issues get overblown in this town because they're competing for the public's largesse. You write a proposal and you tie it to climate change, you got a good chance. Think about the way things work here in Washington, D.C. Issues compete with each other for our money which means they have to be presented in extremely shrill terms. If you don't say, you know, if you don't give us this money for global warming, your children are never going to grow up, you're not going to get the money. Mm -hmm. And guess what? Then the political process says, your children grew up. See, I saved you. Vote for me. Fact of the matter is that tens of thousands of jobs depend upon global warming right now. It's a big business. This is a problem that's going to solve itself unless we do something silly like taking capital away for investment in efficient technologies. And a lot of these policies that are being proposed as a result of this movie will do precisely that. They'll have exactly the wrong effect on the environment. When governments, because of public pressure, decide to favor certain types of technologies that now become politicized, solar energy and windmills being wonderful examples of this, these things aren't going to but do it. But do new technologies work without tax breaks and incentives from the state side? There was a huge program in the United States to develop hybrid cars. Toyota and Honda did not participate. Who put them on the street first? Instead of taking people's money away from them now in a completely futile attempt to do anything about the Earth's temperature, let them keep their money 
and invest in the technologies of the future. But Patrick, Look, I mean, isn't that a stall tactic? No, absolutely not. Look, no one knows what the future is going to be like in terms of its technology, but I guarantee you this, it will be more efficient and you will get there quicker and more efficiently if you allow people to invest in it rather than taking their money away in a futile attempt to stop warming. Even Pat Michaels, uh, who doesn't believe that global warming is a serious problem, drives a hybrid car. The reason I could afford that car was because the government didn't take away my money in outrageous energy taxes. Thank you, Mr. Michaels. Good to have you with us. I had no Thank idea you. that the Cato Institute had a weather guy on the staff yeah, either. Yeah, we do. Thank you.